Hello friends, are you ready to come in to the enclosure too? Whoa! What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Well friends, the channel might be called Reptiliatus, but today's video is completely dedicated to amphibians. That's right, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some newer frogs that I acquired in the last little while. I've been thinking about getting this genus for quite some time now, finally took the plunge, and I'm thrilled to share with you that I got these animals. So, if you're watching this video, besides being a great supporter of my channel, you're probably watching it because you enjoy dart frog content, which for sure means that you watch Troy Goldberg's Tropical Garage series, Yo, what's happening, friendos? He has an incredible channel. Troy is such a great guy. Good friend of mine in the hobby and on YouTube. He's always there to answer any of my stupid questions. No, I'm kidding. But I mean, he's always there for me. And honestly, every time I watch Troy's content, I see his file of babies and I'm like, wow. <laughs> That genus is so cool. And more recently, in the last few months, I've noticed that there have been some captive red phyllobates on the market. I just really couldn't decide if I wanted the orange blackfoots or the mints. I decided on the mints, and I'm very happy with that decision. They've arrived. Alec was gracious enough to pick them up for me today from the breeder. Major thanks to Carlos for these beautiful froglets that he produced. I really appreciate the animals, and thank you for the plant cuttings. We're gonna set up and plant their temporary bin where they'll be living in, and then you'll take a quick look at the frogs and we'll put them into their grow up bin. So they'll be there for quite some time. These animals can take up to two years to mature, from what Troy tells me. At the size they're at now, I think they're just way too small to go into the large enclosure that you'll see. They're just incredible dart frogs. You may or may not know that in the wild, Phyllobates are actually the most toxic of the dart frog genera, but for those of you that are unaware, dart frogs are actually harmless in captivity. In fact, we would do them more more harm touching them with our bare hands than they would harm us because the food that they consume, the prey items, are what enable them to produce the toxic chemicals in their skin that would harm us. And when we produce them in captivity, they're not eating that same diet, therefore they don't produce that toxin. So nothing to worry about in captivity whatsoever, it's just a neat fact about their biology in the wild. I'm super excited to raise these animals. I'm really looking forward to showing more frogs on my channel. These aren't even the last ones I have to show you. There's still quite a few species that I've been hiding from you all. A few more builds in the process, and I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. You may notice that I have gloves on. I don't normally do that unless I'm getting my hands dirty. So as you can imagine, we're going to be setting up an enclosure for these animals, so stay tuned for that. It'll be fun to take a look at, but I wanna show you guys something really cool, so come on over with me to my living room. So friends, in past content, you guys have probably seen this enclosure show up in the background of an intro or me talking about different animals. And I know a lot of you have asked what's living in here. Currently, nothing but maybe some springtails and other microfauna, but I actually plan to house the Phyllobates terribilis mints in this enclosure once they get up to a good size. You're not going to believe how little I paid for this enclosure. I purchased this enclosure for 150 Canadian dollars with everything in it. Honestly, I know, I can't believe it. It's such a good deal. Someone was moving away after finishing school. It was posted on Kijiji, which is our, I guess, equivalent of Craigslist. And lucky for me being a night hawk, staying up super, super late at night editing, I saw the ad, jumped on it, and the next morning I had a message back saying, yeah, you're the first one out of like 20 people. You can have it if you can come today. Oh uh, yeah. So my buddy Bayon and I went, picked it up, and the rest is history. One of the best purchases I've ever made buying something on a classifieds page. Unbelievable. There's thousands of dollars worth of product in this tank. Honestly, without a doubt, the tank itself is worth like 500 or more retail. Yeah, what a steal. The frogs are gonna love it down the road. It had all the wood and furnishings in it. I've added plenty of plants in it. I've thrown an Arcadia jungle dawn on it. My buddy Mike made some custom lids for the top. 
to hold in the humidity, which I really appreciate. Everything in here has started growing really well with that extra lighting, and I have a lot of other adjustments I wanna make. For example, I'm gonna be adding some really nice bromeliads. You guys already know Dr. Brown or Alec, He's actually a very good friend of mine and he and I recently went to go grab some bromeliads for our future dart frog builds. Naturally, his passion and love for these animals exceeds his profession and Alec actually keeps quite a few species of reptiles and amphibians. He's going to be acquiring a few new dart frogs which is why he's also shopping. And what are those going to be for? Little Ufaga Pumilio. The, uh, which locality are you getting again? Uh, El Mirante. I don't know the pronunciation of that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Very nice, very nice. Yes, we're, as I mentioned previously, at Tails and Scales here in Toronto. And they have quite the wide selection here. So we might be going home broke, at least me. No. <laughs> right now, it's literally being ignored. I missed it down once in a while, but everything's just growing in there nicely. So I just wanted to show you guys the enclosure that they'll be moved into once they put on some size. I think they're going to love it in here. The hardscape itself is set up sort of how I want it, but I do want to add some more exciting plants to the enclosure. There's some nice stuff in here. For example, the Monstera dubia on the back wall. Some of the other stuff is kind of random and I want things to be a little bit more organized. They're ideas I'm brainstorming with. Okay everybody, so here is the bin that we're going to be using to house the froglets in for now. It's a pretty decent size uh, sterile container. I've cut out the lid. As you can see, I did a terrible job, but I glued the crack closed and put this here for some ventilation so things don't get too stagnant in here. What we're first going to do is put down a layer of substrate and then I have a bunch of different cuttings that I'm growing in these containers. We have some Pilea Moon Valley here, uh, the Ficus Pomeo, a few monkey pods, and then also some coconut hides. So it should be good for them. First thing we're going to do is add a thin layer of substrate. Now you could just do sphagnum moss, but I like to provide a little bit of soil. It gives the plants something to really root into that provides a bit of nutrients as well. Once that's all stirred in nicely, we can add a top layer of dried sphagnum moss. We want to cover the whole surface and afterwards what we're going to do is spray it down with a bit of reverse osmosis water in preparation for planting our cuttings. Next, we're going to add a few hides. Because we have four froglets living in here, we want to make sure that every animal has a safe space to go to. Now's the fun part. I'm taking various cuttings that I have growing in my bins and placing them into the enclosure. That's because a lot of the plants I chose will root quickly over the sphagnum moss and don't actually require being planted into the substrate. There is some strategy behind this madness. Next, we're going to be taking a tissue cultured sample of moss. You'll see that these are grown in a sterile environment with a vitro media, if you will. You need to rinse that off well before you can use it. This moss here has been rinsed off, so what we're going to do with it now is actually take a pair of scissors and chop it up finely. What we can do with that chopped up moss is spread it throughout the enclosure in different spots we hope to have the moss take, and really as long as it's wet and watered with reverse osmosis water that is devoid of too many hard minerals, it should grow under bright light and in the ideal conditions. I decided to add one more larger begonia cutting just to increase the sense of security for the animals. Now we're going to add a bit of leaf litter for the frogs as this is something that also provides them with a good sense of security and will also give the springtails we're about to add to the enclosure a place to hide and get away from the frogs under. I'm also going to set a shallow water dish into the enclosure for the animals to utilize if they wish to have a soak. Well everyone, if you ask me for a grow bin, this enclosure looks pretty solid. I think the frogs are really going to do well in here and just wait and see how it'll look after the plants have some time to grow in. Time to add our springtails. In an ideal world, we'd be adding a lot more, but these little critters will help keep mold levels down as they do a good job of consuming it. Aw oh man, look at those little faces. I think they're excited to move in. Hello there. 
These are the frogs. Let's get you in your new home. Okay, everyone, so now that we've completed the enclosure here, we're gonna slide it over. Naturally, we're gonna take our lid off. And we'll take a quick look at the froglets. So here we have the two of them, beautiful animals. As you can see, they look lovely. Their banding is starting to disappear. They're getting some of that adult coloration. Let's go ahead and introduce them into the enclosure. Hello, little guys. Welcome home. Hey, there we go. Go ahead, little buddy. Welcome home. It's your new enclosure. This one's already having a soak in the water dish. That's cute. <laughs> See? Plenty of hides. Happy that this little one found one they like. I'm gonna put that back. So clearly, these are happy little froglets. Let's go ahead and get the last two in. Hello friends, are you ready to come in to the enclosure too? Whoa! Okay, this one just like torpedoed into the enclosure. That's fine as long as you stay inside. Oh, that gave me a little scare, not gonna lie. Come on friend. There we go, everybody's inside now. Awesome. Happy little frogs. That guy's having a little soak too. And then we have another one here. Let's see. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what are some of the qualities you would like to see instilled in the hobby that you feel are sort of lacking? Let me know in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll give your comment a heart, and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. I personally think that the sense of community needs more compassion and a bit of patience and understanding. Too, too often you'll see on forums and other pages, people are very quick to judge and attack new hobbyists. And I think besides the fact that that deters people from joining the hobby and learning to love and keep these incredible animals, it paints a bad image for the rest of us. Maybe it makes us look kind of arrogant to say the least. And yeah, that's just something I see. Now don't get me wrong, the flip side of that is that anyone looking to keep an animal has a immense responsibility and ensuring that they already know what they're doing before they acquire that said animal. That's really important. But there is some gray area that I see a lot of drama in, and that's when you see people that truly did take the time to do their research and keep their animals right, ask a very innocent or simple question and get destroyed for it. And that we just can't afford to have in this hobby. We really need to have a stronger sense of community, a stronger sense of unity and support, and I'm very curious to see what other thoughts you might have to add to that. So a very community oriented question today. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much. Friends, I wanna take a quick moment to show my appreciation to my newest channel patrons over on the Patreon platform. We have Robert, Cleo, and Phoebe. Thank you so much. As well as Abby and Dustin. Thank you so much to all of you for becoming my newest channel patrons. I appreciate your extra support and viewership so much. It means the world to me. If you guys are in the different tiers, you know what perks are on the way, so stay tuned for that. And don't forget that you have that direct line of communication with me. Take full advantage, and I really look forward to getting to know you all as well there. And if any of you friends are also interested in learning about how you can support this channel a little bit further, for as little as just $2 a month, Check out the link down below to learn more about it and I appreciate your support and consideration. Awesome.
Well friends, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video about my Phyllobates terribilis mint. They're a beautiful species of dart frog and I'm so excited to be raising and keeping these animals. Really crossing my fingers that out of the four animals there's at least one pair in there. Thankfully these frogs are pretty easy to keep communally as you've probably seen on Troy's channel. And I also want to take a quick moment again to thank Troy for all his advice and help. It's really great to have such a close-knit community and such a supportive community. And that's one of the other reasons I'm so grateful for all of you because we can learn so much from each other and support one another. So that's something we're all looking to create more of in this beautiful hobby that we all love and cherish. So continue, continue, continue to do just that in the comment section down below and in your daily actions. Thanks everybody for watching. If you want to see more content pertaining to these wonderful animals, check out the playlist up above. And otherwise, I will see you all on Friday for our next video. Take care everybody. Bye.